Right, good morning guys and girls. I'm going to do a slightly different approach today. It's weekend and the volume is different so the levels don't really matter the daily levels. So I'm going to just have a sort of a zoomed out view. So just for your reference um, or orientation there is the all time high and I'm on the one hour and then I looked at this block uh, I've mentioned it to you before um, but I just want to show you where I get it so that was obviously uh, quite a week down there those were the lows and those were the higher lows that I marked there and I found that block and obviously look how we tested the top of that block so first test second test the third test might be low again and then a hard rejection or the third test might just push push through but I'll cover these zones, zones as I move on. So first, the most important um, range, rather, is probably the existing one we are in right now. Um, just a quick view, there's our value area low, and we're not managing to to breach that this morning. We've just reject, rejected off that. It looked like we were, we retested the VWAP, and it looked like we're going through. Now we're under the VWAP, so downside is more how can I say, we're probably going to go down rather than up from here, a little bit down, range, whatever. There's our point of control and obviously value area high. Zooming back out here, I'm going to get to our next fixed range. And the reason why I chose this um, range here is because that was right on that drop there, let me just switch it off again, on that drop we had there on the 4th of December, that was quite a hard drop down and I thought this was the, you know, we're in this sort of a range you can see, to me it looks like we're, you know, we're in a range here, um, so switching that on, I mean if we kept on going down here yeah, it would have been slightly different but we sort of recovered and we came back up here. Um, so that obviously there I spoke about this to you before that point of control is right in the middle of that range that we've got there uh, look at this um, little block resistance block we've got here the, the top of the resistance block is as that um, high volume node was picking up so there was rather no or very low volume and as we're starting to eat a bit of volume on that node uh, that's where that resistance block is yeah, just this, our current point of control is also on a slightly higher um, volume there. And then I spoke to you about this, these lows here. Uh, you see it correlates or it uh, corresponds with that little range we had there. And obviously very high volume here. So that's, that, that's really good um, support that we have there. I think I've got some... Uh, yeah, I've marked that as a key level for us. Right on there, we'll get to that just now. Yeah, I've marked that as a swing failure pattern. So in the short term, that will be definitely be my... Um, uh, um, well, today, that'll be an uh, a area of, of interest for me. And then I think we we might want to take out these lows here. I think I've marked one of those there as a swing failure. And I've also set an alert there, because I'm not going to sit in front of the charts all day on a Sunday so that'll be a big area of interest for me and then we'll let me go back out here again you'll see we don't have any volume here so anything that goes down fast because that was that area you know goes up fast and the other way around again we can just pass through there again because we just don't have any trading in that area so if we lose if this swing failure pattern I'll, I'll get up in the middle of the night for this you know for this trade because I think it only comes around like once a week or once every two weeks. But if we lose that, I'll be looking at these higher volume nodes down here, like the top of that, the 38500. We'll get to that, but that's quite an important level down there. Um, right, uh, moving on. So the next area or the range, let me just switch off that one. Um, is if we um, sh 
how can I say, s redefine or make it a little bit smaller this range here, um, cutting out that drop we are down there and where we are now. Uh, we have that point of control and I think that corresponds with the one before. Yeah, that makes that a really strong level, that um, 47,000 and I just know from my experience that 47,000 just is a very, very um, big psychological level. So some commentators think if we can cross and hold 47 for a while, not come down it and come down it again, hold it and work up, then that just translates directly into a, <laughs> a new all-time high. But we, I, I don't think that's the way we should think. There's a lot of levels, 47 and then 50 is definitely uh, the next big psychological level and then 54 is also yeah, I'm not going to go into too much detail around there because I'm not prepared for that, but those are big, big um, uh, levels. But 47 is definitely the big one up ahead. And just going down here, just looking, we have to look at those high volume and that high volume node once again correlates with that the area we are or the our support um, on the lower time frame for this weekend. Right, our next fixed range that I've got is the one that is can I say correlating where we are right now it's the previous range before we um, had this like a lower range that we moved through and that point of control is once again I think that was that that's probably the key level that I that I had marked in there let's just see there yeah on that point of control because that's the, the only simulation we have of this zone or range that we are in right now and that's the top of that uh, mini range we've got there, so I think that is a really important level that we need to hold. The wicks through are fine, but if we start closing daily candles below this key level, then we're definitely heading for lower. And below this key level, there was this range, or mini range I'll rather call it. Um, if we look at the value area low of, of this uh, range, then that's also really close there so we're probably gonna that will still support us if we swing failure pattern that that low that we've got there so it still makes sense on the way down and then uh, let's just look at another I think the this lower range was my last one I've got in here so not much to say about that but um, this obviously there is the 30, 36 and the top of that that value area high yeah, this is around that 38 zone where we set our, our last support is. Uh, let me just go right out again. Yeah, around there, 36, 37, there's, and there's another high volume there, uh, around 38,500. I believe that 38,500 is quite an, quite an important level for us. And there's one other area that's of interest, so uh, as I said, I'll, I've got my alert set for there, and then I've got another uh, if we manage to break this um, resistance block, then we might push up to that point of control, so that'll definitely be my next area of um, interest for a swing failure pattern of that, maybe come back, find support, and then push up again because there's, there's high volume there so there's they'll and that translates into resistance when you're below it when you're above it it'll be support and then as we're eating that next high volume note that'll be the um, the next high that we need to take out and that might be another swing failure pattern not setting an alert yet for that because I think we've got some really hard work to to do before we get there so these are the areas that uh, that are of interest to me. Obviously, uh, that point of control, and then that high volume node. But it basically comes from uh, it comes from this high volume node, that 38 500 area around there. And then we need to that we need to hold that low there for the weekend. Um, and worst case scenario, come down and take this low here. But if we lose that, uh, you can see there's nothing there's nothing there so we're gonna probably go down to that area there uh, to the upside obviously the point of control will be first resistance and then the big resistance we have up there even bigger uh, this point of control and then that high that we've got there and if we overcome that then we have already overcome come this 47,000 then we're aiming for the for the 50s 
So I hope this has been helpful to you. Uh, um, I think that I just want to encourage you to you know to take these small trades. I mean, if you're watching this video, then you're obviously interested in trading. But when you, if you've got a full-time job, then these are the type of um, videos you should be watching. Um, you should be not the ones that I originally started off with. I think that's more for day trading. And if you can day trade or scalp, then you don't need my videos, like I said yesterday morning. Um, so I'll probably sh move more to this type of video content. Um, maybe not as zoomed out as we did today. And then take those little trades. So I really encourage you to use this um, little trading long and short tools that I've showed you before. You can just look for this in the sidebar there and place your little trade there. Just start off like that. But do your technical analysis. Don't just use this as a cheap tool. And, uh, and really work out where do you want to put your, your stop loss and why. And obviously I keep a journal. So I, I just use Evernote. And I make a little screenshot of this, I paste it there and I use one or two sentences just to explain why I take this trade, why is that my entry point, um, my stop loss is there um, because the, it looks it's the bottom of the previous resistance block turn support now or something like that. Just small entry so that you can go back if things go right then you I just make a little note at the bottom of the of the journal saying winning trade or losing trade so I can go back and uh, but I mean we all use different so you can use a little Excel sheet just with five six seven columns um, so that you can with that you can you know, do statistics and say which trades were your winning trades and maybe there's a strategy because we're all different um, I know my mind works with um, pictures and images and I see things and I see lines and so it's um, quite important to to find your own um, little trading strategy or niche that, that, that works for you. But the only way you can do it is if you take, take um, well, our, our real trades but in inverted <laughs> commas so that you can start getting the feeling for it. And then um, Bybit and um, I think FTX and all a lot of these exchanges have test nets where you can actually, they give you like a $5,000 account and you can fool around with it. You can never obviously um, extract the money but you really lose it and you really win and so that's so after you've done this and you start feeling comfortable move on to the next level start doing those little paper trades so-called paper trades but on the account so that you get the feeling for everything because then there's a quite a lot of things and buttons you need to click and things you need to do um, in a very short period of time start moving on to that and when you getting get confidence with that and you've proven to yourself that you can actually make money then you go right back to small amounts again but with real money because it's I'm telling you it's very different to trade with real money even um, then with a test account um, because we all want to be successful traders and you know that only 5% of traders that are actually you know, that includes retail traders um, is are successful and I want you guys listening to this or watching my videos to be successful traders because it's not like some other industries the more people there are the more crowded it becomes and the more difficult it becomes to make money yeah the more people are trading the more money there is to be made and I you know and, and I don't want you to follow or make the mistakes I made like listen to the moon boys some of the influencers on YouTube because that's how I lost um, uh, quite a lot of money you know going back to let me just try and find that that drop mm. Last year, the 19th of May, I'll never, never forget that. That's burnt into my memory. Here we are. That drop, I was in quite a big trade, and my uh, luckily it wasn't all my. Uh, um, I was educated enough not to put all my eggs in one basket, so I had a lot of spot trade on altcoins. But my big trading account got basically wiped out on this day, the 19th of May. I was so, so depressed and um, humiliated that I got caught up in the hype of Bitcoin is only going up um, so I don't want that to happen to you luckily I'm still in a in a total in total I'm up on my portfolio but that doesn't it doesn't help it doesn't um, heal the wounds because I had a lot of money there and I, I lost it so I worked hard to build my account to there even though it was a, I've still got more than what I originally put in I worked to get that money there and I lost my money not just my playing money it's my money I lost 
and I don't want you guys to do that. So when you you know you're never just going to have an account that looks like that. I'm um, going in a straight line and trading or any business or life doesn't work like that but you also don't want it to go like that all over the show because there your emotions gonna be I'm the shit and then you're gonna think I can never do this and you think no I just made a mistake I am actually the real shit and then you're gonna say this is not for me I no, I'm, I'm done I'm out but you must accept that there's gonna be losing trades and you want your account to to do that consistently just going 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 don't don't go for what I used to call the legendary trade. I, I still have a little, um, can I say, um, I always keep a small part of my trade open. I've showed you I take profit quite aggressively in the beginning and then I leave a small part, like a 25% open for if it really runs up to the top. It's a small part but it's still some sort of satisfaction that you really got the, the trade right. But forget about the legendary trade. Just get consistent. Get consistent. Lose one trade, win two trades. Lose one trade, win one trade. And then you start pushing that up to 75% win rate, 80% win rate. I think that that's it, uh, as good as it gets. So I've really rambled on for quite a while here. Um, I hope I didn't bore you. Um, you can push up the speed of your <laughs> YouTube. Um, but I, yeah, that's, at least there's something to look at. Um, happy trading, enjoy the rest of your Sunday and I'll talk to you again tomorrow morning.